Welcome to the Truthful Universal News Network. Ton. No more mainstream media lies. It's time for the awakening. Welcome to Ton. Bad news is I've had trolls threaten me with copyright lawsuits, but everything I do is 100% legal, so I have no worries. Good news is I have big plans for this channel, with the website and podcast coming soon. This is a follow-up to the best Max Spears documentary, so if you haven't seen it, please go back and see it first, as I won't be revisiting all the necessary information. You will hear from multiple people on their thoughts regarding the death of Max. All factors are analyzed and taken into account during this video. This is simply an investigation meant to spread news, education, and critique through fair use. I am not implying or alleging anyone in the following video had anything to do with the death of Max Spears. My thoughts and prayers are with the family and friends of Max Spears. So with that said, here's my official statement approved by our attorney on the death of Max Spears. Stuart A. Swerdlow, great nephew of former Soviet President Yakov Sverdlov, says that he is a survivor of the Montauk Project which was an outgrowth of the secret government Philadelphia experiment. Stewart is a main subject of the award-winning Montauk Chronicles docudrama produced in 2014 by writer-director Christopher Garitano. Montauk Alien Connection, which I showed you earlier, published by Sky Books, is his autobiography in which he details his incarceration, which he believes was designed to silence him, as he openly writes about how he was convicted on one count of opening a bank account without pro proper documentation. He was then illegally sent to a prison outside of his juri jurisdiction until this was eventually remedied. Mr. Swerdlow now works as an author, lecturer, and personal consultant based upon his personal experiences and has been on the self-help slash conspiracy lecture circuit for over 20 years. In his line of work and international travels, he meets and interacts with many people, amongst them was Max Spears. Mr. Swerdlow says, quote, I was saddened to learn of the death of Max. Let's see, he came to Poland to escape unsupportive people who would not let him see his son, ex-girlfriends who stalked him, and other family members who made his life miserable. We had exchanged Skype and text contacts, and he wrote to me about his personal issues, as do thousands of people around the globe. When I read that he was involved in a cult, and people heard satanic rituals in the back of phone calls, I had to sadly laugh. First of all, do these people who are reporting this speak Polish? Since he died in Poland, anybody speaking in the background would have had to have been speaking Polish, and Polish is an extremely difficult language. I am truly saddened that instead of letting Max rest in peace, that attention-seeking troublemakers are literally trying to cash in on his death as well as drag myself and others through this mud of this circus. Unfortunately, people try to embellish their own lives by making outlandish claims about others. There is no cult. I have nothing to do with Opus Dei, which I openly trash in my work, and I have no followers. I work alone. This story has been totally sensationalized. Max had problems, and his passing was truly tragic. His passing has absolutely nothing to do with conspiracy. The people who are saying these things about me and my work are leaving themselves wide open for a lawsuit, if they are saying these things. My attorneys are well aware of what is going on, and this statement has been approved by them." Unquote. And as I said, all of this is written out on our Facebook pages and on our website, Expansions.com. Now my bigger question is, which I will continue with some of my thoughts, my bigger question is, why is this story being sensationalized like this four months after this gentleman's death? What kind of show is going on here for you? Did you ever think about that? And why are you being so involved and drawn into something? I mean, it's ridiculous. So this is now mine, again approved by my attorney. Instead of believing gossip, take time to know who Stuart and I are as people. Read our books, watch our videos, and decide for yourself. And if we're not your cup of tea, 
then don't trash us and add to the garbage of the world. Simply move on until you find your place. There are many paths to God. Find your path and leave us to ours. Yeah, and, and, and the police have said that they they want money to investigate. I've never heard the like of it. I was talking to mm. um, my editor this afternoon, and he said, yeah, well, that's the way Poland is. But I thought we were supposed yeah. to be with them. I mean, we're not come out. I thought they were supposed to be in the EU and with us. I mean, what, yes. what's the deal there? I don't know. I don't know. I was shocked, and it was, uh, it, it, you know, it came through the mail. Must have taken about, I would say, six days to get here. And it said, this case will be closed. Um, the only way you can extend it is if you pay a thousand pounds to extend the time. <laughs> so it was, as, it was as simple as that. And uh, uh, as they're, not even, they're not even promising to do anything, are they? They're well, just saying, uh, oh, we'll extend it. And what, what does that mean? That, that just means it's not closed. Which That's doesn't it, it doesn't even say that they're going to work on it, does it? Which it doesn't say. No, I think that I, I, you know, it's speculation at this point. But I think that um, the way the letter reads, and it's terribly simple letter, is that unless you can come up with something that says it's not a natural death, mm. then um, we need to close this and get on with everything else we've got to deal with. That's the way it reads. Yeah. Sh you yeah. should have a, a full report and a full, um, inter you know, yeah. um, a report, a written report of um, an interview. That's the way it would happen here, and of course. it hasn't happened there. You you should get um, you should get help. You know, at the very least, funding or, or something. I can't believe it's just been left. Now, when that guy, the the prosecutor, came on, he said, "I wasn't informed for a month and a half after Max's death that he had died." It's supposed to be within 48 hours. So he wasn't informed for one hell of a long time afterwards. They told me I had to pay a thousand pounds, which God bless him, David Icke, actually came forth and stepped up and, and, and presented that to keep the case alive. And you know, when you talk about a month and a half to be informed, um, when it should have been done in 48 hours, the uh, the coroner, yes. that... You, I know you've looked into it. You can't find another example of that happening, can you? That, no. That was unique to Max, right? Yes, this is what's so bizarre. But a toxicology no. report on Max, even a week after his death, would have, mm -hmm. would have demonstrated, and I've looked into this, would have demonstrated clearly if, yes. if, if a substance overdose had caused his death. But they didn't Break say away. that. They never said that. Max died. God help me, at six o'clock in the evening, he didn't leave that house till 11 o'clock the next morning. That he'd been I Ill, could just yeah. hear people scrambling around, which is what I've said, and I've been argued with about people about this, and, and some people have said, well, they're Polish, they wouldn't have been speaking English. They sure were speaking English. I absolutely heard them, and they were saying, get cups of vinegar, cu vinegar get cups of blood, get cups of milk, and I heard it as clear as I can hear you right now. Um, so I know there was some effort to do something with his soul. I know that, that, that I know, but I don't, I, to this moment, don't have a clue who was there that night. Um, I heard Sarah in the background talking to Monica, Sarah Adams, in the background talking to Monica on the phone. Um, and outside of that, I could hear other voices, but who was there or what went on? is a complete and utter mystery. Oh. So Sarah was talking to who? To Monica. I could hear Sarah talking to Monica. Um, Sarah called across to me from another phone, so it was like I could hear her across the room right. saying, you know, something's terrible has happened here, trying to give Monica some advice, trying to tell Monica what to do. But I don't think by then there was anything that could be done because uh, I'm sure by then, because that was at half past ten and Max was declared... Uh, deceased at 6 p.m. Uh, why, why, why do you think um, Max was murdered, Miles? Um, what was the trigger? Do you think he was sucked into um, some kind of cult out there? Or what do you okay. think he masterminded the whole thing? Let's, let's get things absolutely clear. I was not there. Nobody here was there. Oh. No. And so the only information that we've been given is from the people who were there oh. and have made statements. 
Uh, and I'm not going to mention their names, but nope. there's been three interviews, so we've got information from that. We've got the information from an individual, uh, possibly two individuals who have spoken to me, spoken to Vanessa, and spoken to Kerry Cassidy and Project Camelot. Yes. So we are only able to judge what happened from what they have told us. I want to make that very clear. Yeah, and I agree. I absolutely agree with you. We weren't there, and my first conversation was in, as it turns out, four and a half hours after we'd lost Max. <clears throat> so the, it, it's in somebody else's court, and certainly not Miles, and certainly not me. We are surmising. We're trying to put the pieces together from research that we've done. The last thing I got from Max oh. was on the 7th of July, and it says, right, I'm, uh, we were discussing what he was going to speak at the conference. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying a factual-based show with performance. That uh, He's replying, yes, he will have a factual-based show with performance. I'm in the process of organizing it with her over the next few weeks. It will go smoothly, not a worry. And that's the last thing I got from Max on the 7th of July. Yeah. Uh, if if we postulate a number of scenarios, yeah, nothing quite works out in any one of them. No. Nope. So you is... you you were telling me the other day, Miles, that um, you believe they were working um, a ritual on him to um, separate his possible alters, and then uh -huh. didn't you say something about the soul? Um, they they well, this is soul. this this is eloquently and precisely described by Sarah Adams on stage on, on, on the Friday that, that she was there. Actually, I will address something that somebody said about me doing black magic on, on Max, of quote, when he was, uh, quote, died. I did do something that, of course, as I just explained about soul transfer energy, what I did is uh, when they had Max, I demanded that they put a couple of candles and a wine, which represents blood, milk, and water. I, those are for three forces, by the way, that are very important. I won't explain too much about this because of the fact that I keep a lot of um, things hidden so, because they can be used negatively. So basically had them put them in a pyramid around Max and draw two hearts on a paper and put that on him and a bit of blood. Now this is so to allow Max that if he did want to come back or what he wanted to do, how he wanted to transfer, that he was able to do it, that he was not stuck. This is something, of course, that is depicted in <laughs> the new X-Men movie, I've noticed. stories that Sarah killed Max or is involved in Max or uh, 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 uh. magic and stuff like that. And no. We both know that that's complete rubbish. Rubbish. Sarah would never, you know, want harm to come to Max. Never. Go to even quash any type of story that um, Sarah was involved in any way whatsoever. Yeah, um, I'm more Sarah. than happy to put that out there. Um, Completely, she would never um, harm him or want him harmed. What she is doing is the same as me. She's trying to piece together the pieces of this jigsaw to try and work out. And I think actually we're 
on the same page. I want to um, try and find an investigator who has strong contacts there and yes. who, um, both with the underworld out there and with the mm. cops out there and intelligence, you know, to really get plugged in. I mean, um, the editor I spoke to who I work with said that he would like to go out there and sniff around. But yeah. I mean, I think whoever goes, um, A, it's going to be dangerous. B, they're going to have to be yeah. out there for a long, long time. Yeah. The whole reason I had not spoken for three months was because of the respect for Max. So when I did, it was because they said they would close the case if they didn't have this money. So then I panicked. And then I found that people will happily, and I learned about the press very quickly. Yeah. Um, and thanks to you, you know, I was in the situation where I am now, where they've offered me um, £750 for that story. And you know what, that nearly pays the thousand that I needed. So as far as I was concerned, that was what it was all about. Yeah. Uh, just had that awful thing that somebody said she's making money out of her dead <sighs> son. So I, I, I've been upset by that. It was only one. The last time I heard from Max was on the 14th also. That was my last contact with him. What did he say? Um, it, 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 I asked him how he was because he had said that he had this high fever. Um, and he had said to me earlier in the day on the 14th, that's when he said to me, your boy's in trouble. I said, what are you talking about? And he said, I'll talk to you when I come back. I'm coming to do Miles' basis conference. So I never got anything out of him there. And then I sent him a text, which I have, which says, are you all right? How's your fever? Um, and he said, I'll go to the doctor. It hasn't gone by Monday. I have um, antibiotics. And that, sadly, is... is the last, so there's... Um, you met with Stuart Swerdlow and Madeline uh, yeah. to arrange to, to go and do this conference. Uh, conference in Poland, however many days that was. Stuart was part of that conference. Then that seems very, very, very strange that there's been nothing released from that, doesn't it? Why hasn't there been anything released? I don't know. It may have been released and taken down. I don't know. Um, I mean, I did look all over YouTube for all of them accident reviews after because I wanted to download all of them. In case right, have it kept together in one yeah, place. In case, in case any of them were, were deleted or taken down. We need to ask people about that then mm. because that's strange. And I'd like to know if anybody's got any copies of what he did in Poland. SS thought that he was, Max was going to decide to just go back to the UK and forget about, you know, helping the SS and uh, the Polish group. Maybe that would be a reason for them. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be a reason for getting rid of him. The other thing that I I would like to mention um, is that that last one, you, you've spoken to this guy that did the interviews, right? Yes, Alexandra, yeah. Did you by any chance ask him why he would conduct an interview with a person who sounded like Max did? I asked him about the interview as to firstly when the interview was released they said there was a video but that um, they only released the audio at the time and that the video would be released a few weeks later he changed his story and said um, there was no video at all and it was only audio or you know was, he, he never stated that there would be a video um, as to why he was being interviewed in that state I've Listen to the interview a few times, it's quite difficult to listen to. Very. Um, the first time I listened to it, I could only listen to about 15, 20 minutes. Me too. And um, it was pretty obvious that Max wasn't well. I wouldn't call it an interview, I would call it an interrogation. Interview. Oh, would I? Um, Guy didn't really care um, um, about Max's well being. Several times he was, Max was reminded to breathe. I mean, if, if you're in an interview and you have to be reminded to breathe, there's something wrong. Personally, I have no idea why that interview took place. Uh, and even more so, why it was released. Because it puts very bad image oh. towards the Polish people. The fact that uh, his last interview, you know, you can pretty much tell the guy's dying on the interview. And why would you even release that? To me... That sounds like he's dying, and it sounds that's why I wonder if it was done 
<sighs> if it was done the day he died, I really do. I, I, my, everything in me tells me he's dying. The interview was supposed <laughs> to have taken part on Tuesday the 12th. Uh, four days before he died. Yeah. Considering Max's state during the interview, he could have been told anything and he would have agreed to it, most likely, I don't know. But Yes. So even, you know, even him saying it, he came back the day before, you know, he may not even have known what day of the week it was. During that no. So, but is there any way of proving that it was the 12th? No, we're only going by... Um, the Polish people. I think the interview was released uh, not long after he died. Um, and then I heard something else saying you, it will all be revealed fairly soon. A couple of odd comments from the Polish side, which um, yes, seems strange. That's the message I sent to you from Alexander that everything will be revealed soon, something like that. Oh, there you go. I can't remember exactly his wording, but you've got the messages in there. Yes, yes, um, yes. And he said that Monica would not be speaking anytime soon, but all everything will be revealed. I haven't, I haven't messaged him recently, really, because I don't really trust anything he said, so I don't see any point in continuing, continuing, continuing communication with someone who doesn't seem to be speaking the truth, really. No, but wouldn't it be, I mean, you know, even from the point of view of a red mark on his head, it would be, you know, wouldn't it be good to be able to see if he had it then? Mm. Because, you know, that would be something, wouldn't it? Mm. I, my, my feeling is that um, he died after that interview was finished. And that I don't even think that jumping up and down on that disgusting video of him but they chose to show max jumping up and down on a trampoline yeah now i'm postulating here and i'm and i could be wrong and i'm i'm just making a postulation the logic of it is that if you were going to sell something you want to make sure that the goods are in good working order and, oh. and and that is what they were doing by having him bouncing up and down on a trampoline i really do feel that it is um, disgusting, but um, the, the, the interview tells us nothing. The interview said he obviously got something in his system. He yeah. got. I mean, he sounds high. We know this clearly. He sounds high. Yeah, he was complaining of problems with his throat. Couldn't couldn't breathing. breathe. Couldn't swallow. Yeah, yeah. Um, would would you not say well? Let's stop this interview and get you to the hospital. As we've Max. said before, with Max being very ill, uh, I mean, Vanessa, you've said that you know he could have just died of a peptic ulcer. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, why didn't you bring? The, why didn't these very nice people and uh, you know civilized individuals yes. take the man to hospital? Oh, yeah. And that question hasn't been answered. Mm. But every interview been... prior to that had video. And the only reason why that would be audio is either they don't want you to see what state he's in or they're doing something to him during the interview which they don't want you to see. So that's the only reason I can think of why they would do audio only when all the other interviews were, you know, video. Yeah, and, and he does say at the beginning, because I have not been able to listen to it all the way through, um, but... One thing I did catch was him saying something like, uh, we can't find anywhere that's really good to do the video, like the visual, mm. so we'll just make this audio. So if rubbish. you listen, you'll that's hear rubbish. that. I've done interviews sat outside and can sit on, sit on the sofa. It's, if you can find a place to do an audio video, interview, you can find a place to do a video interview. Yeah, you know, and, I mean, and uh, I don't know if you've looked at... Um, Monica's house at all because it's very easy to find um, no, like it is to find anybody's house right. you just uh, you know you could look at my house easy you just pull it up and do that thing and um, it's very yeah. large yeah, I don't and, know um, it's anything, so I no it's all but it, but the yeah. point is it's a very big house right. and play, and uh, you know it's with very large grounds so a very strange thing for him to say. To say that you can't find somewhere. 
Yeah. But do you think he was being exploited while he was in Poland by certain people to either promote themselves or, I mean, I know Max was talking about writing a book because you've already said that Madeline was a publisher um, and he thought maybe she would publish his book. Do you think they had other reasons for keeping him there or wanting him there? Well, Madeline and Monica are in the publishing world. So that would be a number one. Number two, Max is just by nature a traveller. Um, so he would... Uh, he enjoyed somewhere new. Um, so that would be another reason. Was he being exploited? I don't know what... what um, what there would be for them to exploit unless they saw well, he had, he had that, quite a big following well um, it was it was getting bigger this is one of the things that bothers me is that it was like you can see it significantly started to pick up and so i think that means more people are obviously going to hear more of what he has to say if they don't want that out there best thing is to silence him the computer which he had been working on a lot because he'd been working on the book. Um, we'd worked together a lot on it, just trying to, you know, shape it. And I'm an English teacher. And so we were doing a lot of work there. Plus, um, you know, the talks that he was doing. Who, with, who sent you his belongings? I requested them separately. Um, she quite rightly was worried about putting them you know, with his body in case they got lost because they're expensive items. Um, so she sent them separately. Um, but the computer is is wiped. There's nothing on it. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely nothing on it except one, uh, you know, when you do the screenshot thing of um, mm -hmm. people talking to each other, it is texts between Max and uh, SS, right. which is uh, the initials that I use, and um, it is extremely negative um, on the part of SS about Sarah, because I was hoping that the police would be glad to have it, um, but it seems to me that um not much um interest has been shown the phone is gone um she sent it back without the um sim card sim i asked do you have the sim she searched and found it um and i haven't done anything with that haven't even looked at it so i can't tell you the answers but so in other words she originally sent it with um without the sim in it but i have the sim safely so has vanessa spoken out about the book she was sent vanessa would you like to speak about the book you were sent? well i ha i have um and it's just a book um i can't remember the name but i've got it in the cupboard and it's about sacrifice um i'm sure i've spoken to you about it miles i forgot the name of it now but it's about um human sacrifice and names a lot of famous people it's a published book that you could buy kanye west hits you as a name that's in the front of the book nothing to do with me at all uh, but it's it's quite revolting it's got a warning on the front can you remember it. vanessa the package that you got that in yeah i got the package i've kept it now what i would like you to ask is was the package opened and then sealed again didn't look to me like it was. It was one of those very tightly sealed packages, you know, that you is like a plasticky feel to it, so you couldn't get into it. And there was the. Uh, I mean, book. was it a Federal Express or something package or something? No, it just it just um, it just dropped through the door, and it looked like it was six days after it was sent. And inside it was the um, SIM card to Max's uh, phone. And, the, and, and was and that who, sent by the who, Polish who, authorities? No, it was sent by someone else. Who sent it, Vanessa? It was sent by the lady that uh, Max was staying with at the time. Monica? Yeah. Absolutely, she sent everything that I asked for. Do you want to talk about at all his relationship with SS? 
you know, their relationship was um, um, short term. He had been interested in the work of SS for a long time, uh, for many years. Um, it, you know, because anything in that field interested him. So he sure knew of him. So therefore, he was interested to meet him. Um, what he found was, um, and Sarah will talk, talk openly, and I am sure very happily, about the fact that he, SS, did not want Max involved with Sarah. Yeah. That was very, very, very clear. Why? No idea. Other than that, about him, I know very little. I know, um, because he may very well listen to this. Um, in fact, I would think he probably will. Uh, I know he made a public comment that he had felt Max hadn't been looking very well. I don't like the picture of him, SS and Max. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that one. With I think. Around him, yeah. 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 Don't like the picture. Don't get a good vibe from it. I don't know because I tend to look at Max. If you look at Max's face, you, <laughs> it's he's not very good at hiding um, <laughs> how he feels. Yeah. And if you look at lots of pictures with Max, you'll you'll catch that. I, I think you probably know what I mean. Yeah, it, it, I it's um, yeah. it's there. It's written all over his face, and I don't think he looked too happy in that one. I just know the driving force. The driving force was number one. He wanted Max to work with him. Yeah. Any time he wanted that. I was present at many of those conversations, and Max and I had many conversations about that and. Um, um, I started to get the same feeling that Sarah had, which was steer clear of it. This isn't good. He's very uh, pushy. He's very, um, you know, what, what he wants. He's quite determined for it to turn out that way. That's the impression he gives me. But more than that, I didn't even meet him, so can't give you too much more on him. Uh, he, was planning, he was planning to come back to the UK. Yeah, he, he he was going to come back for the conference, right? Yeah. The base that we knew because we'd been talking about what would be the best. He had so many things he wanted to say. Mm. He wanted to do this exposure of these people that he had this issue with. All I can tell you is there is my conversations uh, with with Max, and I think Canterbury has a certain safety about it for yeah. Max. I do not believe that he was going to go back again. But there are others who think that I am wrong, not least of all, uh, Monica. You may want to see Sarah as well, um, back in the UK. Yeah, well, yes, and that, you know, that thing with Sarah, as I said, went back and forth. One minute, it was, yeah, you know, I'd like to see Sarah at the conference, and the next minute was, if Sarah's going to the conference, I won't be there. That's how it was. Sarah knows this. It was back and forth. And he said this to his um, very close. He has one very, very, very close friend called Richard, who is not in the field and stays very much in the shadows. But um, Max has been in touch with him, known him since he was six years old, and has been in touch with him constantly all that time. Um, same age as Max. And um, he spoke to Richard while he was in Poland and said, whatever happens, just make, if anything, no, if anything happens to me, make sure that Sarah is not um, in, in, involved or keep Sarah out of the picture. Sarah, there's no question about it that um, Sarah was quite determined to keep Max on the, on the straight and narrow, yeah. make sure he was fit, healthy, and well. And uh, no question that there was love between those two, so I'm not questioning that for a second. I just mean it was a very volatile relationship, which is a page we have to be very careful with, and she knows that. But no, I've shared things with Sarah um, that I haven't shared with anybody else at all. Awfully difficult, because once you're 
there and you're involved, you will get those who think, or perhaps she's involved, perhaps he's involved. But I have to tell you, this Opus Dei, D-E-I, yeah. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, it's, um, it's part of the Catholic Church, I believe. Yes, um, I believe it is. But I wouldn't want to say on air exactly what they're involved in. No, and I don't think we should. But um, what I say, they do the work for the Catholic Church that nobody else wants to do. They're yeah, a polite way of putting it. Well, let's suffice to say, I think that there's a link. We can say that, can't we? Right, yeah. This year in particular, it's say, you know, from the period when he broke up with Sarah, um, he wasn't romantically involved or engaged or planning to get married to anyone. No. Mm. Absolutely not. Monica definitely had very, very big love for Max um, on, on every level. That's, um, that's a fact. Mm. I don't know Monica. Um, and I don't know the story behind it. One could speculate as to how or why that whole thing came to being. But Monica, but um, in terms of Max, no, there was nobody. Max was um, faithful to Sarah throughout their relationship. This, I expect you know about this weird thing that happened with this girl. Was her name Sandra? Is that it? Oh, right. Might be. Yeah, Sandra. Yes, quite a pretty girl. Somehow involved. Is she involved in the bases or right, makes yeah. movies? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know her. Mm. Um, I know Max met her a couple of times. Went up to London to meet her once, I think, in between his two trips to Poland. Right. Um, she was putting huge pressure on Max to come back to England early, um, earlier than the conference, because she couldn't, she had to have him in the last scene of the movie she was making. Oh, yeah. I couldn't do it without him being there. And I was very clear to him that he shouldn't put his any of his agenda around anything to do with her. That he's in control of his own choices. And if her film can't be made without him in it, well, she'll have to wait. And he doesn't have to do it at all if he doesn't want to. Yeah. But it seemed odd that that kind of pressure was there. Then he got some phone call from her. She was very drunk. Um, he spoke to me immediately after the phone call about that, saying furious about her um, because she'd said some... I don't even know what she'd said. I don't know if perhaps she'd said, I hate you and I never thought you were attractive or whatever. There was no romantic relationship on his part there at all. Mm -hmm. But why why all that went down, I don't know the details of it. Anyway, he was furious, um, didn't want to be anywhere near her, checked, with, something went down, Miles was angry about something to do with it. Anyway, it transpired that she was not going to go to the conference. I don't know now after this happened whether she went or not. Did she go she in did. the end? She did speak okay. to the conference, yeah. I wasn't sure. Um, but no, yeah, she did. Well, that was all right because Max wasn't there. Um, but something went down there, and what I've told you is all I know. Um, but was he involved with her romantically at all? No. I think about two or three days after Max passed away, uh, Kerry Cassidy and Miles Johnson did a video. Sandra spoke on that video. Oh, um, did she? And there were some things said about Sarah. I don't know if you want to comment. But well, well I'd um, know what was said. She basically said that Sarah had not been in contact with Max for two months or more prior to him dying. Max had blocked her on Facebook, um, or Sarah had blocked him either way. They were not talking to each other. Um, I already know the answer to this, but are you aware if Sarah and Max were talking prior to Max passing away? Yeah, I, can, I, I know exactly. I mean, 
they were quite, Max blocked her from Facebook many times. Yeah. Um, Sarah did blocked him. Also, I, I know that. Um, ha had they spoken to the two months prior, two months prior to his death? Yes, they absolutely had. Mm. Absolutely had. Mm. Um, that was a constant thing while he was here. I was, I was right there mm. uh, when he was talking to to Sarah. As I said, it got very volatile, and it wasn't good towards the end. It it was really bad. I know that there were moments when they were thinking of getting back together, and then he would say, "No, I, I, I don't want anything to do with that." That exactly what I told you mm. is what it was. Was were they in contact? Absolutely, they were. Absolutely, yeah. right up till the I very mean, very this. end. Yeah, I've seen the messages um, on Sarah's yeah. phone from the night before. Of course, the night well, the afternoon before he died. Um, well, yeah, because he sent a picture of him in the bath, silly yeah. fool. Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> uh, I just, I got, I'm so glad he didn't have the phone in his hand because I thought, <laughs> well, that would verify that because I don't believe the phone. Well, maybe, you know, maybe that says it. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, that sort of makes you think maybe he did drop it in the bath, doesn't it? Mm. Doesn't really change anything, does it? Not really. Uh, but no, he was in touch with Sarah. Right up till the end of life, yes, for sure. No question. Um, we were talking about Miles. You were talking to him regularly. Pretty much, I think, as soon as you told him something, you did a video about it. Um, Miles, Miles was Miles was and continues to be interested in the uh, the autopsy results, which we all are. Uh, Miles is an intelligent guy and he's pretty knowledgeable. Um, in areas that are not like certain things that he said I should get checked um, on an autopsy level, uh, which was quite useful, you know, certain poisons that can do this, that or the other. Doubt that they will look for snake venom. I mean, they're highly unlikely to look for that in a regular toxicology report, right? So I've talked to him mainly about that. Um, have My Miles and I have speculated, and um, because he knows, again, he knows more about this field than certainly than I do. Um, so we speculated. We're not actually miles apart mm. in terms of uh, where we think the trouble lies. We really aren't. I have not found him to be a problem for me. I found him to be really quite. Um, quite helpful. I think that um, he's a journalist. Mm -hmm. You know, first and foremost, that's what he is. He dedicated his life to this business. Um, he did also do a lot of work with Max, mm -hmm. promoting Max before Max died. Yeah, I know. A lot. Uh, now, whether that was because he saw the potential for someone who was going to go places, that's possible. But then again, that's journalism, isn't it? I ha certainly haven't heard him say anything unkind um, about Max. Um, I haven't heard any outright lies. And it is not to be underestimated that Max um, has a short fuse. Um, yes, he comes from the heart. He's very kind and loving. But he's also short-tempered. Yeah. Um, and uh, if somebody... Um, crosses his path he can be very reactive um and it seems to me miles has got that about him too so putting those two together in a bad uh, moment clash of, clash of personalities you could say. i would say so i would bet you that there would be moments when they would uh really um yeah, you know start shouting at each other and i believe that you know, I believe that happened. I think there was one particular night when Max was over there with Miles and it got a, a bit overheated. But they both seemed also to be pretty forgiving and quite willing to um, to let things go. Um, yeah. You know, I don't think they either of them held on to it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see anything or read anything ever that I felt um, Miles was putting Max down at all. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. Max's website, now, I know this was set up literally days before he died. 
Yeah, um, although he'd been working on it for ever such a long time. I mean, you know that. I can't, and this is really interesting, I can't shut down anything to do with Max until I get a death certificate. Would yeah. you believe that? You can't shut down a uh, even a Facebook page without death certificate. I do know that it's still running. Okay. Like, I know what a website's for, obviously, but I don't know of websites that have been kept going after someone's died. Yeah. Do you know any examples of that? It's think... also a bit weird that the website is also in Polish um, as well as English. Um, yes. I thought it was a bit weird, really. All the text and the videos um, are in Polish and English. Anybody has anybody been useful to you from from a political background? Uh, I got a I I've, I got a letter after the media exposure from from uh, Brazier, who's the local MP, saying that he was going to push uh, the various people so that things would move. And in truth, it did happen after that. So yes, I think the media actually were very positive in many ways. So it was the MP, um, you know, and and really, I guess that's. Well, and the police, the police have been, it's all amazingly, you know, people complain about the media. Without the media, I don't think I would be sitting here today with the case that I have. Well, you're going to love this, Vanessa. Mm. Madeleine Nambro is invited, uh, uh, she wants to do another basis conference in, in Warsaw. It's kind of shocking. Isn't it? If something is as unresolved as it was with Max is... Mm. then how can you talk beyond that? I mm. find it mm. shocking. Mm. I find it a different kind of person. Uh, the only other thing I want to cover is, I know Max has been buried and I've set up a, a page for donations. That's for, right, yeah, for lovely. His, for his memorial service. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that, you know, people know that you have approved it. And yes. That the money will go to the family for uh, headstone and memorial service. And when I said about the money I'd spent, believe me, it wasn't, um, you know, asking for money for, for me. Uh, it's just that it, it's incredible how much it all costs. And so now yeah. we're at a stage where um, it would be a great it would be a great help if there's a bit of money that could go towards his tombstone. And in terms of having a little gathering, I just think it's. It's lovely to be able to say goodbye. I think, you know, to have a gathering with anybody that a group of people um, have love or respect for, it, it's great to get together and talk about it, talk about him. Um, we need to get funds to um, pay a top-notch investigator to inv investigate it properly. You know, I mean, why should, why should they get away with it? Well, right, otherwise I shall be putting my, um, my hat on and doing it myself because we're very in the dark and we're under pressure from the Polish police to get this done. Mm. There's nothing that they would like more than to just shut the doors on it before mm. we knew anything. And I give, I absolutely promise you, there is mystery here and um, we don't know the half of it. We know that it's to keep this fight going because they're threatening to shut it down because it was such a natural death and and that's the bit that's uh, that's been the killer but if we could keep it alive that that's all that's all i need whoever's done this to max it stems from a very high source which is why it's so difficult to track it down almost feels like somebody's mocking him or us i know the coroner has the laptop and the phone what yeah. what are you waiting for now what's the next step for you inquest the inquest. Yeah. Now, can you explain inquest. to our can you explain to our listeners, and, and I'll be honest with you, explain to me as well. I've covered inquests as a journalist. How does one go about getting uh, the launch of an inquest? How do you do that? The the inquest just has to there has to be enough uh, in, information and enough evidence to for the coroner to decide that there needs to be an inquest. That has been decided. And the inquest will go ahead here in this country. The questions, all the evidence will be presented. The questions will be asked. I will have an opportunity to ask questions. And from that, 
with the police there and, and all the other people who have been involved, there is a decision made as to whether there is a case. And in this particular case, there's two avenues. One is the authorities um, in Poland and how they handled the case. And the other is the people who were involved that that night and what went on. How, so, how sympathetic and how sensitive have the Warsaw police been to you? I know that they've interviewed a number of people who were there. Mm. Now, of course, you being his mum, I can only imagine the your desire and your, you're, you're desperate to hear what these people are telling the, the police. Are they sharing information with you, the Warsaw police? It's all, uh, the, the situation is that we have hundreds of pages uh, of information and it's all come flooding in since uh, the media picked up on this the first time around and it's all in Polish. And we now have to reach the point where it has to be officially translated. It can't be that I can get somebody who speaks Polish. It's got to be a legal translator. Uh, but truth is we have, from being blocked and being told, you know, there was the, the, there was one person was not available because he's had an injury and another one, you know, it was all like a brick wall. Now, I believe everybody's been interviewed. There are many, many, many interviews but all in Polish at the moment. I think we're going to have to put pressure on the authorities. That, and, and I don't know who can help. The only person that can help is whoever tells me why he died. Whatever it is, the speculation is out there. Mm. There's everything from mm. overdoses to peptic, peptic ulcers to, mm. you know, radiation. And I'm sure many mothers have said the same thing. If I could just know what happened that night, mm. that mm. would that would let me sleep. 